Um, last video, I sent this rough draft over to the client. The client really liked it. I also sent three variations on the pose of the skeleton. And the client wrote me back and said he really preferred the first one, this one here. So what I've decided to do is take the art to a uh, complete finish. In the last video, I was primarily tracing my reference images to create my artwork. Tracing it is gonna give you a more realistic effect. So if you're going for more realism, that works. But if you wanna get a little bit more creative, a little bit more unique, uh, more one of a kind, you can just draw it. Now obviously this is gonna require some drawing skills. Now if you don't have drawing skills, I would argue that our job title is Tattoo Artist. So with artist being in the title, you really need to spend some time developing that aspect of it because that's what's really gonna set you apart from other tattoo artists. Work on your art skills. So here I'm just gonna draw the design using my reference images as a guide. Um, this allows me to go in and just finesse every little aspect of the drawing. I can work around every little part of each object and just finesse it. Uh, I can look at the contour edges and reshape them a little bit. Uh, maintaining the, the flow of the original reference image, but you know maybe if I have a line that I just wanna smooth out or I want a little bit more of an S curve or I wanna curve this a little more rather than angle it or vice versa if I want a nice sharp angle instead of a curve. I can go through and make these decisions. I can exaggerate certain parts and in the end, I'll end up creating something that is just a little bit more unique than uh, a direct duplicate and for this particular piece i think that works well um, because i'm not confined to just being absolutely realistic i can stylize it a little bit as i see fit and really what it comes down to is when i'm done with this i'm going to compare it to the first one and see which one i like better and again i don't do this for every tattoo design i just i got motivated with this one uh, I thought it was a cool design. It made me just want to work on it more. So here what I'm doing is I've created my contour lines. I'm happy with those. And now I'm just going to go in and shade it. So starting up in the head, you know, I got my, my big black dark areas first. And now I'm just going in and I'm coming off those dark edges and shading. And I'm just using a pencil. I'm using a pencil brush in Procreate. And although I do like the pencil brushes in Procreate, um, honestly, there's, there's really no replacement for actually drawing with pencil on paper. Uh, I sometimes get annoyed with Procreate just because it doesn't quite have that perfect feel of a pencil on paper. Pencil on paper, I just feel like I have a lot more control. I can work a lot quicker. The digital side of things is really nice because you have that option to be able to undo redo, erase, change things really quickly. Uh, whereas paper and pencil, you're, you're a little bit more limited. So there's pros and cons to both. And I also think it's very important to note that if you can't draw something really good on paper or digitally, then you're not gonna be able to tattoo it well. This is just a fact. You're not gonna be able to tattoo something better than you can draw it. So if you can't draw and you're trying to do an artistic design, an artistic custom design, and you're failing at it on paper, you're also going to fail miserably at it on skin. So this is just something very important to know. So like all black and white drawing, I'm simply paying attention to the values in my reference photo. I'm working dark to light, got my darks in, I'm looking at the variations in shadowing on the face and I'm simply trying to replicate those. And notice that this is not a quick process. Uh, again, using the pencil on Procreate, I honestly think shading takes a little bit longer on Procreate than it would if I had uh, pencil and paper. But a lot of this is just going over things over and over again to help build up those values. Now for a tattoo, is it really necessary for me to go through this step? Not really. I've already got the design approved by the client. I've already created my contour lines and I'm happy with those. And from those, I can make a stencil and actually do the tattoo. I really don't need this step. This step is not exactly necessary because I already have all the shading 
from the reference image, which I can look at while I'm tattooing. So me going through this step of actually drawing it and putting in all the shading, not necessary at all. In most cases, I actually won't do this step. I got my skull out and posed it. Using my artwork as reference, I was able to set my light up so that I could try and match the shadowing, the lights coming from the same direction and casting the shadows in such a way that it matches the rest of the artwork. Also notice too my positioning of the camera. I'm paying attention to the orientation. Where are we located? Are we looking up at this face? Are we eye level or are we above it looking down? I tried to match it visually through my camera lens. I was moving my phone up and down until the skull looked about like it was the right orientation from my rough sketch. So then from there, it was really easy to use the skull as reference, uh, draw the skull in and shade it properly. The horse clearly was very easy to shade because I had a reference photo to look at. I really just had to kind of fake the shading on his shirt and on his gun. Uh, because I did not have uh, reference lighting images for that. However, because his clothes are kind of tattered, you've got some ribs showing through. Uh, I feel like I had a lot of room to just kind of put in whatever I wanted without it looking off. So then at, once I was happy with the artwork, I had some concerns about how this was going to look on an arm, primarily because the gun barrel sticks out so far. Um, that's really the only thing I don't like about this design is how far out that gun barrel pokes out. And although it looks good as an individual piece of artwork, on skin, especially a, a narrow, slender arm, that barrel's going to wrap around the shoulder. And anytime you have a really straight object wrapping around, uh, that can be troublesome. Mainly so when you try and take pictures of the tattoo afterwards. When you try and take a photograph, that barrel is actually going to look like it, it's curved because it's wrapping around. However, in person, it should look fine. Also, too, another concern I have is that you have two objects facing in different directions, and the one facing towards the back is the more prominent object, meaning the horse. So the horse is big and prominent, and it's facing backwards. I, I just feel like there's some conflict going on in the design that is going to maybe not sit so good in the position where we want it. I just go on the internet, find a stock image of the body part that I'm going to be tattooing, and then I'll just put the design over that photograph and, and just look at it and see how it looks. And I may even send this to the client as well, just so that they can kind of get a better idea of what it's going to look like on them.